We have made the mistake of seeing the challenges as our enemies. And once we see that the challenge is pushing us, we either tend to retrieve in our cave and say, okay, no, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna avoid that challenge and create my own world, which create an energy field around us of isolation. And slowly through time, could be from one life to another life, that bubble of isolation create a profound disempowerment. We lose or lose our ability to connect with the with life, with other people and the source that inspire us to grow. So with that approach we actually have not understood the role of the challenge and self-empowerment. We try to avoid it, we try to make it our enemy, we try to, okay, I need to modify myself, that's the second approach, I need to modify myself in order to cope with this challenge. So you start mm, manipulating or intervening to alleviate the pain of the challenge. So you're not actually facing the challenge, you are just simply accommodating the lesson that life has been trying to tell you what it is. In either of these two positions, either you retrieved or you accommodate, you intervened, you are deeply disempowering yourself and you are not solving the lesson. You are not advancing in the lesson. So, therefore, it will come back to you in different ways and in more high volume. So, it will be more in front of your face every time. It will be at the point of being unbearable. So that's when we have delay or taking positions that are not really understanding that, okay, this challenge is here to empower me. And I have not known what the empowerment is. So through this process, simply asking, identifying the, pro the, the challenge. Okay, what is my challenge? My challenge is health, let's put it that. Everybody have that in the background, in a conscious or unconscious way. I need to be healthy and I am afraid to lose my, my health and suffer. So if that get accommodated, um, You, you are not gonna, you are just gonna have great diets and great fitness exercise or, or pretend that it's not there. But if you see that, that the challenge is okay, it's because I will have to lose my independence and I'll have to ask for help. That's one example. And you keep challenging that. Is that real? Why this is important? What is the belief system that I have attached to that particular challenge? And is in that belief system that the light is trapped, your power is trapped, your empowerment is trapped. Once we release that and understand what really is the lesson, what really is what we've been calling to empower ourselves, them is release. Then that challenge is not anymore in your life. And more importantly, as we saw in the meditation, it won't occupy a space in the body. 
because that is space of unresolved empowerment create a vibration, as I say, either in buckets, pieces here and there, in different organs, in the bones or nervous system, depends on your dosha, or it will occupy certain field of energy. And it will increase and decrease depending on other factors, maybe astrological factors, maybe a diet, maybe... Um, other diets, but at the end is occupying your physical body. You're not able to reclaim fully and completely the physical body. So empowerment, challenge, and being the body are all together. Nature ways of helping us to embody, to get the power of embodiment, is by challenging us. That we need to understand. It's not because you're wrong, it's not because you, you, you need to fix something, it's not because nothing. It's because it's nature's way to take care of you. So first is that gratitude that Okay, I have a challenge and it's guiding me to reclaim back my body, my energy field, fully and completely. Now, let's see by example. What, let's learn from each other. What is the, the, the different ways that we can approach that? Give me an example. Maria, what is your challenge? What did you find? Uh, I was working with the challenge uh, pain in my hips. And uh, under challenge, I, I put abilities to heal myself, fear of uh, losing uh, mobility and uh, avoidance of pain but during the meditations what came to me was shame very good let's talk a, about a, a one particular that touch all of us and is the mistrust that our body is not able to heal this particular uh, trust was the link genetically to all humans to disempower humans, to make it dependent of other religious rights or, or um, belief in somebody else different than the body. The body as a doctor was disembodied or was delinking and we lost the connection with nature, the partnership with nature that say, well, I can heal through the light, I can heal through, uh, through herbs and air and fire and all the nature's components. And that divorce created a great distrust and it had been one of the greatest human challenges since the invention of doctors. We lost that sense of, I have the power to regenerate and recreate my whole cells and heal, even create back members or, or parts of the body that I have lost. We were able to construct back the finger that we lost or the, the teeth that, that were moved. We only are moving just one pair of teeth, but if we're supposed to regenerate all this naturally. And with, the, with that trust, then the invasion of all the belief systems came in. The belief system that I, am, I, I will suffer, being in my body is a suffering, being human is a suffering, being on earth is a suffering, 
Death is a suffering. Death is a defeat. It's a shame. So you may experience it, especially if it's in the hips, in that area of creativity, your womanness, femininity, second chakra connection, relationships. All those themes may be related to I cannot heal myself in front of others or I am ashamed to show that I can heal. All these profound um, collective belief systems about health and the relationship with the body, that the body is a handicap. We only have trust that, okay, if I have a cut, it will close. That's as far as we have go. But really the capability of the body is the same capability of the universe itself. It's creative in the more profound and mysterious way. And our belief system have blocked that. We just, okay, no, I cannot heal. I don't have energy. I, I cannot understand light. I cannot understand sound. I don't, I don't know that I am an energy field with immense mandalas of light that can reshape itself in any moment and can take form in different ways. So that consciousness, that trust, as you put it, is really um, something that, um, in your case, is occupying the, the, second, the second chakra, that part of your body. But anciently speaking, or from time, it had been taking our whole entire body, our energy field of the whole entire body. So as 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 that comes um, to your personal understanding, you may find in like, oh, it's just shame. But really, is is that um, regret? that we have lost something absolutely essential for our life to exist and or better say to, for us to exist in the form and and to start just the, the challenge and the empowerment is I can heal myself and it's not I who heals is nature and my body as part of nature I am nature is able to recreate itself in any shape it wants. So this is a profound, you have touched a very profound um, collective uh, disempowerment and you have touched the opportunity to start exploring a little bit that within yourself and, and to others. Because we're not only able to use the energy of healing to reconstruct ourselves but we are also able to transmit that to others so that's when the misplacement of doctorhood took over it was not something like okay let's do it together it was something more like it is now i have power over your body you do not know anything about your body and you cannot listen to your body. You should not trust your body and just listen to me. So, and it's going more and more deep into that. We're just abandoning that power and relying on sources that they have no idea who we are or what, how we work. So, thank you, Maria. That was really, really a good starting point for you and to allow the space to really go deeper and farther into that reclaiming back into that empowerment of I own my body and my body knows what is best for me and I will be and I am able to listen to what and understand what is it that I need to support that healing. Hi Gore, honey, what did you have? Well, my challenge is is um, more on the higher perspective um, as 
as a I under I identified my challenges um, not being sure if my progress is quick enough and if I if if I am useful in the moment. <laughs> And that's my challenge all the time. Is, so, um, they, during the, the meditation, the you know I had to go out of my body to, to reach the troubled area or the area where the, the frequency is, is being uh, housed. And it's um, sort of like it's like like okay, so this this troubled area is right before the um, border is and, and beyond that border there is no access and uh, and it's sort of like why there's no access to this other troubled area and what was revealed to me is is because I created it and I think that I have to um, gain a code to, to that uh, doorway, next doorway, and I have to somehow gain it through through work and through um, through through whatever means it is. Through but hardship. Then I, said, yeah. well, then I said to myself, "Is it really? Is it really that I have to do it that way? Why don't I just go?" And and I went, and, and it all of a sudden opened in, in front of me, like like nothing. So that was what I what I gained from the meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you you also have touched something on on the collective, whereas the serving the serving aspect, and with that attach comes the the need or the belief that you need to be recognized. So servitude is something that we have discussed before this servitude thing where initially the, the races that were manipulating the humans as a slave a thousand years ago were making humans uh, and giving the message that they, are, they need to serve the gods and they need to serve them and if they serve them well then they will be recognized and the recognition was just to have a simple food and simple luck if we can put it our way or have an auspicious times so it comes quite quite a, a long time that belief system that also have this empower our own servitude where we have lost track of what is it that I need to serve and that serve is not something that is towards something or towards a destiny or towards your role or towards is 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 simply the exploration of life you serve the whole when you are participating in exploring the different ways of living, different forms, different times, different um, frequencies. When all that is being embraced, you are serving nature. You are serving, um, you're giving the data to the library of life, how and what is possible for the living universe to continue it. What are the possibilities? So it has to do with self-creation and it has to do with understanding that by giving life the information of what you experience and what you live in different frequencies, you are serving the whole. Instead, we we do like you say, we, we make hardships on okay I need to do in order to be recognized and to serve the society or serve my family or serve any anything any higher goods or any spiritual things or my own advancement which is nothing to do with the actual how we serve is by playing our role 
And sometimes that role is unpleasant if you are, for example, a, a, I don't know, a, a murder or, or you decide to explore something um, very low or painful. Or it could be very exalted, very pleasant. So it is the diversity of these experiences that you choose from life to life, from form to form, that serve ultimately the enrichment of the data, of the library of life. And then life can use that data to create other universe, to create other parts of um of you that can't experience different things or in, in a different way. So by self-correcting the belief system of recognition, servitude, um, effort, all those things, you are empowering life. You are directly empowering life and you are directly empowering the mysteries of 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 possibilities, or just simply possibilities. So recognize the empowerment. That's that's one thing. And during this this week, I want you to recognize just the empowerment itself. So you challenge your belief system about servitude. You challenge. And if it's out of your body, it means in your physical body, you still have a lot to descend, to incarnate on it. You probably feel frustrated if you have to defend your space in order not, not to serve others or wanting to serve others but not knowing how. All this is confusion within the body. So if you had to go out of your body then challenge that within your body, within your body. That way you reclaim more space and in your physical form. You, the physical form will have more chance to be light, to be, to, to be empowered by, by life itself. Okay, Sheila, what you got, honey? I saw my challenge right now as health and experiencing um, some, you know, some severe pain, abdominal pain, and during the meditation, relaxation um, was was uh, of the body it was really easing what I was encountering physically and almost I, I felt I just felt very very tired again I felt like I was having a hard time staying awake mm -hmm. so it felt a little bit rejuvenating um, and my reflex, reflection before the class was the health was about being more present in my body. And I know that looking after myself feels more like intervention than it does like deeply going into it deeper. Yeah, if, you, if you're finding that the health is like an intervention, it's because the connectability between you and your body, what I was telling earlier about that trusting that connectability, that, okay, I know, I know, if I am having cramps, if I am having certain kind of tension, is where I am not listening, where I'm not trusting that, I am able to rescue the information from my body and to establish a link between me and my body um, of communication, of partnership. I understand 
my body is the life force, is nature itself, and I understand that my head, my mind, is the tool to connect with that life force. Then if you feel that, okay, I just need to take some tea or, or medicine randomly, without that connection, then it will feel like an intervention. It will feel something coming out of fear, coming out of desperation, coming out of insecurity, coming out of disconnection, instead of just connecting with the communication. Me and my body are one. And that is such a deep empowerment. Um, and the crumbs, the crumbs, it is in my experience that I cramp when I have certain belief system that is been occupying the space instead of my communication with my body. And with this simple meditation, you can, you can connect, you can connect, and and every time you sit, it will be reclaiming a different way. So, it's empowering your yourself, your health, whatever challenge you have in front, through attention, through the intention that okay, I am, I am looking at you, I am, I am spotting you, I am. I know who you are and I know who you are occupying. And with the no intervention, with the attitude of, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And as you learn to wait, the communication comes much more quicker and with less effort on going in meditation or anything like that. It just, you just know as you practice more and more. And the miracle of it is as you practice that, you will know on others too. Especially if you are a mother, you are able to connect with the body of your child and see what's going on and then attendingly attend the child from that, from that place instead of just trying to accommodate or intervene with your will or what ideas you may gain from your exterior. So that's truly an empowerment of, of listening to the nature, nature of your body. And, and with that, you are connecting with nature. It's, 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 it's as simple as that. My body is nature. And nature can speak to me. Uh, and I am entitled. My mind is designed to listen and understand and cooperate with nature. That's, that's the very basic principles of natural medicine, is, is, is that. Very well, my friends. So with, that, with this meditation, you can really turn any challenge into empowerment. And to, I want you to bring the understanding that every challenge Number one is not my enemy. Number two um, is a place where I can empower myself. It's not that I can. It's, any challenge is empowerment and is pure form. So with these two understanding, you can go through the process of this meditation and practice. Practice during this week. Um different challenges that you have, some subtle, some gross, and see how how will come, how the the learning of empowerment through your challenges doesn't need to be um, grow too big. You can use countless challenges that you have and turn it into the ever glory of empowerment of self-empowerment very good my friends so i'll talk to you then next week 
at the same time. 